King of the Campbell. Okay, here we are with uh, biking with Cam, or possibly hiking with Cam. Today we are testing the Cam Park uh, Extreme One Plus Ultra High Definition 4K uh, Action Cam, and we are comparing it to my brand new Brave Six Plus. So I've got these cameras uh, set up basically uh, the same. They're kind of pretty close to these standard settings. I'm currently running without a microphone. Uh, so you can hear what the sound is like when you are uh, not running a mic and I suspect I could be wrong but I think the cam park is going to be better in this respect um, <clears throat> than the Brave 6 Plus uh, and there's a good reason for that um, because the, cam uh, the Brave 6 Plus is running a ton of noise cancellation so it does sound quite tinny it does sound even a little bit tinny when you're running a microphone but uh, later we are going to jump on my motorcycle and we are going to see if it does what I hope it's going to do. Um, what the reviews seem to suggest is that I will in fact now have a moto vlogging uh, camera that is suitable for using on my motorcycle. Whereas as you'll see the cam park is uh, effectively useless in that regard unless you just want the video but um, here is a test just to see what uh, it is like to vlog uh, be aware that uh, these are both shooting in 4k right now but only the brave 6 plus is running its image stabilization because the cam park i just discovered that when you put it into image stabilization it immediately drops to 2.7 uh, I suspect the image is going to be much better on my Brave 6 because uh, I think it's a bit more geared up for shooting 4K. Uh, it was twice as expensive, so it should be a better camera. The uh, Cam Park is about 120 bucks, and the Brave 6 Plus with the, um, the memory card and what have you was $240, something like that. New, we're talking New Zealand dollars here. Um, but anyway, this is what the image looks like moving around. This is what the image looks like. A little bit backlit, a bit frontlit, and this is in 4K. Uh, let's see what it looks like in 1080, because I think the cam park may perform a bit better uh, in that regards. I don't think it's really a particularly good 4K camera. Okay, I'm now shooting in 1080. I have both the mics plugged in. Now, uh, hopefully the sound will be better. Uh, than it was. It'll be interesting to compare that. I won't be adjusting any of the sound levels uh, when I do uh, the post work. Uh, you should be able to see how the cam park's image stabilization is working now. Both the cameras are in uh, 1080 and 30 frames per second, um, which is uh, one of the lower settings. Uh, the cam park goes right down to 720. Uh, I didn't check whether the Brave 6 Plus does or not. The Cam Park will shoot 720 at 120 frames per second. Um, the Brave 6 Plus will shoot 1080 at 90 frames per second, which is pretty nice because then you could reduce speed by a third if you wanted to do that. Here I'm walking around. This is what it looks like with a bit of backlight on me. No idea what these are framed like, of course, because neither of them have a front monitor but um should be reasonably good they're quite wide uh the brave 6 plus is has an adjustable lens but that adjustable lens is currently set on its widest which interesting interestingly enough i don't believe is as wide as the cam parks uh lens so that might be a bit of a downside um i don't know whether there was any cropping for 4k i guess that will become more apparent when i go into the edit suite I haven't used my cam park a lot. I used it a little bit. Um, uh, I went up in uh, Mount Rapehu and um, did a hike around there. I used it. So I'm headed down to the Huda Huda Nui Hut uh, down in Mount Rapehu again. Uh, 
anyway, um, now, one of the things I noticed with the cam park is that it needs to be, oh, yeah, it needs to be almost a metre away. So it'll be interesting to see how soft I am in this shot. So if I bring them closer, um, we'll get a bit of an idea about whether these, so right now I should be very blurry. I don't think they work at this sort of close range. The cam park will definitely be blurry. Um, I think they're, they really need to be about a metre away from stuff. Uh, to kind of give uh, a sharp image. Anyway, I think that's all I wanted to do as far as this was concerned. The thing that I really also want to do is, so this is if you wanted just a cheap vlogging camera, tiny little thing to take away with you on a holiday. You didn't want to carry much stuff and maybe you just want to take some photos and, and what have you. Uh, I think if you want to do that, the Brave 6 Plus is probably worth the extra because I think it's going to give you better images. Um, but the camp park might do the job. But um, to be honest, it's probably not going to take as good a photo as it's probably even in like a cheapish phone. Uh, anyway, uh, so the next step is uh, moto vlogging. Does the Brave 6 Plus work as a moto vlogging camera? Let's find out. Quite a bit of moisture in the air, so I don't know if I'm going to end up with a whole bunch of raindrops on the lenses on these two cameras and then you're not going to be able to see much. Uh, which is annoying. Uh, it's pretty cold at the moment, uh, so I live in New Zealand. If you ever heard of these. And uh, I don't think my, um, I don't think my uh, camp park's going to like this very much. Because um, it's raining. car so it's supposed to be uh, water resistant um, it comes with a housing as well but it's supposed to be water resistant but then on the box that it came in I didn't see anything at all about water resistance in fact there was no information on the box uh, at all it barely even had the brand so um, yeah okay so I sort that out um, Nicer day today, so I'm shooting in pretty bright sunlight. So be interesting to see. Yeah, that's with the visor down. I don't know whether that improves the sound or not. It'll be interesting to see if that sunlight um, is a bit too bright. Uh, it did look like it was a bit overexposed. The other day with that original footage. Oh, my visor's misting up. This is why I don't ride with my visor down. Because the second you do, you can't see anything. So that doesn't work. Uh, back to situation normal. Put the visor up. Uh, so it was very overexposed. Well, maybe not very overexposed, but somewhat I thought it was a bit overexposed yesterday uh, on the Acaso. Uh, it does give you a bit more room to uh, boost the contrast a little bit. And uh, so I think it just gives you a bit more latitude. I think the resolution is higher. I think it is higher than the Acaso, um, and that is making it look less sharp. So I think that's why it probably needs a bit of post work on it. Um, and once I've actually created a um, color correction profile in Filmora, if I can find something that works, that makes it look good, um, then I just need to save that and then I can just cut and paste it onto any footage that I have um, with this camera. And that does increase the editing steps. Uh, it does increase the load on my computer. But, um, yeah. Now I'm not shooting in 4K. Uh, I'm shooting in 1080 at 60 frames per second. I watched about three hours of footage of this Acaso Brave 6 and other Acasos and what have you. I was deciding which camera I was going to get and decided to get this camera and for what it was worth because it seemed like when I was watching it that it was really good footage but now that I actually own it and I'm looking at it and comparing it to my cheap nasty camp park I'm kind of going it's not that good which is a little frustrating there's a lot of buffeting on my helmet a huge amount if I duck down here where I can't see anything because I'm now looking through 
this ridiculous windscreen on the Africa Twin. I feel like I'm in a little sound bubble where there's no wind noise and maybe this is a lot better, but um, I don't really want to ride along like that. Also too, I want to be able to stand up. Um, this feels like I'm in slightly clearer air here actually. This is, so there's wind, but it's not so buffety. Um, if you own an Africa Twin, um, one of the things they say, oh, is there's lots of buffeting wind and stuff comes up through the fork tubes, and you can buy this little plastic shield that um, that helps with that. But I, I've got one. <coughs> I don't think it's doing anything. Um, fortunately, I bought it on AliExpress, so it cost me about three dollars. Um, Okay, let's do some colour correction. So here we go, colour correction on. So I have boosted the, um, sort of pushed it into the warmer tones. Uh, I was going to go warm and green, but I think I'm going to go warm and blue. And then I might just adjust some of those other colours independently and try and pull down the magenta a little bit. I'm going to crush the blacks. By that I mean I'm going to take some of the detail uh, out of the blacks uh, and that makes them a bit crisper you lose some of the detail in the shadows but it also makes everything look way sharper um, try bumping up the contrast a little bit and increasing the colour saturation a tiny bit and see what that looks like Okay, so that's color correction on. And here's color correction off. And on. And off. Uh, what do you guys think? Do you think uh, it's better with the color correction on or off? Uh, too much? Too much color? Too much contrast? Uh, what's it look like on your monitors? Oh, here I am in the cone of silence again. Entering the cone of silence like Maxwell Smart from the old TV series Get Smart, which you'll only know what I'm talking about if you are my age. If you are one of my high school kids tuning in and having a look at my YouTube channels, hey guys, thanks for all your support, um, then you won't know what the hell I'm talking about. Look at another YouTube clip. Type in... Uh, Maxwell gets smart and, and a cone of silence and then you'll see what I mean and you'll go wow old people watch terrible television I think they made a movie about uh, well, it seems like uh, yesterday to me but it's probably 10 years ago so that's not going to help much because it's still if you're young it's still like a really old movie I think it had Anne Hathaway in it, so it can't be that old. Anyway, uh, I can't remember what I was saying. Uh, I reserve the right to uh, ramble and get off topic. Um, so yeah, we are comparing the uh, camp park with this Acaso. Now, I mean, uh, in, in all fairness to the Acaso, like, uh, like the, uh, as, as you saw in the previous uh, clip, um, you, you can't moto-vlog with a camp park. If you were doing over 25 kilometers an hour, you have no sound whatsoever, just wind noise. Um, this does manage to be usable, uh, not particularly nice, but usable for as hearing what I'm saying, um, up to, I think it was up to about 65 k's plus the other day, and then uh, there's this really nasty uh, buffeting and clipping that you get from the noise cancellation uh, really struggling to do its job, uh, before it became overwhelmed and you couldn't really hear what I was saying. Oh goodness, but I mean obviously it needs to work at 100 kilometers an hour because I might want to be rocking down the motorway yakking to you guys. Maybe that's just not a thing. Uh, let's do that color correction thing again. Here we go. Color correction on. Color correction 
off. Color correction on. Color correction off. Be interesting to see what this camera's like. It's um I think because of the way the case is designed to keep uh, water out, um, it's got an extra piece of plastic over the lens, and I think that's causing more flares. Because if you look at it compared to what I shot the other day with the camp park, the camp park had less kind of sun flares and kind of light distortion coming in than this does. I'm not sure why I'm uh, kind of moto vlogging this because is it worthwhile? Possibly not because uh, I don't know if I'm going to use this. Um, obviously, I'm going to uh, use the bits I need for my uh, camera comparison, uh, whether I clip them both together or not. Or uh, yeah, I'm not putting any of this in. I'm waffling now. I really hope I've got some usable audio here and that this fluffy has made a difference, but I, uh, I'm i pretty sure when I put this fluffy on the other microphone it made nearly no difference. Maybe, maybe, maybe it made five kilometers an hour a difference? I've tried taping the front of this helmet up as well, like just taping up all the vents, taping like a kind of a chin skirt underneath and uh, taping it up so that it, it kind of um, like has, you know, taped right up to my face to try to stop wind from coming in here and it just made no difference. So I don't think it's about the wind coming into the helmet, I think it's about how the wind's <coughs> interacting with the outside of the helmet. Um, obviously this is an adventure helmet, so it's got a peak on it. I think that makes a lot of noise. Uh, additionally, this is a very cheap helmet, so I think it's kind of rattly and not particularly quiet. Um, it's comfortable though. That's the problem I've got. It's like the only helmets that are comfortable are either the $200 helmets or it's either that or I need an RI, which is like 1100 bucks. And I don't have an $1,100 for an RI. It's a shame, because that's a nice helmet. It's like, you get so much more uh, comfortable and just much nicer than this. And I could get it in Honda colours. Like a total nerd. Uh, let's do the colour thing again. Colour correction on. Colour correction off. Uh, let's do a more extreme version of the color correction. Let's do a really extreme version of the color correction. Here we go. Extreme color co uh, correction on. Off. Extreme correction on. Off. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see what that's like. <clears throat> In theory, this should be quite a nice shot. I wonder how it's coping with that sunlight over there in the shadow where we are now because it's quite pretty in a way nice building over there